further discussion. Okay. Yes. I want us to now cross over to the Thika Superhighway where our reporter, um, Timothy Otieno, is, I mean, just taking a look at the works that are going on on the road as uh, this particular system is rolled out. The pilot project is being rolled out. Timothy, um, good morning. Um, I, I believe you've been able to speak to a number of Kenyans about this. What are they saying? What kind of reactions are you getting? Well, Akisa, the reactions from Kenyans are rather mixed and varied in regards to this particular exercise that uh, the government hopes will reduce traffic within uh, Nairobi Central Business District, within most of the major roads within Nairobi. In fact, just a few minutes ago, we were talking to an interesting group of people who appear like the conversation is not actually targeting them. And these are border border operators who are now requesting, at least those whom we spoke to, are requesting to also be allowed to use this exclusive lane meant for some of the NYS buses and the buses that have over 80 seater capacity within this particular highway. Now, this is the Thika Super Highway, and where we are right now is at the Roasters Roundabout, which is just next to Mountain Mall and the Garden City Mall along Thika Road. Now, the work is ongoing, and the work has begun all the way back from the roundabout uh, of the Roy Sambu roundabout, just next to the Kasarani Stadium, and it's heading towards the work is going towards Nairobi. So from the Kasarani roundabout, that Roy Sambu roundabout, they are now demarcating that one lane, the innermost lane, uh, which of course people have asked uh, the, the reasoning behind that, considering most we are uh, left sided country we drive on the left and some of these buses uh, perhaps many were saying needed to be on the left side as opposed to the innermost side which is on the right side and it's expected to go all the way to survey then pangani in then Ngara all the way into the Globe Cinema roundabout. And this lane will be exclusively for buses that have uh, 80 seater capacity and above and the National Youth Service buses that have been in operation within various routes within the capital over the last two weeks. So work is ongoing. At the moment, it may be a bit difficult to find out and see the effectiveness of this directive. As it is, traffic along Thika Road is moving smoothly there is no major traffic within this particular highway and of course as the work goes on buses are not yet allowed to use that innermost lane so they will allow work to continue and maybe perhaps in the evening or uh, moving on to the next couple of days this particular directive will take effect and that is when akisa we will be able to find out the effectiveness of it of this as it is reports indicate that uh, the country loses about 2.1 billion shillings in productivity as a result of the traffic jam and people being held up in n hours and hours of traffic within this particular county and according to a report that was released by the nairobi county government in 2016 by the then governor Dr. Ivan Skidero, he had estimated that there were about 700,000 public transport system within the country. And most of this public transport system consisted of buses, minibuses, and matatus. Now, that is back in 2016. We are in 2018. Two years later, the government has continued to register most of these vehicles to join the public service sector in the country. So we are expecting that those numbers may go up. We could now be talking to about 1 million public service transport vehicles in the country. An influx of these vehicles, but not a relative or subsequent increase in the road infrastructure. Most of the Nairobi roads have relatively remained the same. Expansion of roads has been selective. And perhaps this initiative, the government hopes, will be able to reduce and solve this particular crisis of traffic that I have mentioned is costing the economy about 2.1 billion shillings annually. We are yet to speak to some of the motorists as I have mentioned uh, there is no traffic so trying to flag down motorists has been a bit of a challenge for the moment but we've been able to talk to passers-by as well as the border border guys who also want now to be involved in this and be allowed a 
as well to ply this particular route. And as you mentioned, there are some countries in the Western world and even in Africa here that have designated specific lanes for public transport vehicles, Dar es Salaam being one of them. And there are even countries that have designated specific lanes for bicycles and motorcycles. We are yet to see the same here in Kenya, but perhaps this move by the transport ministry led by the cabinet secretary, James Masharia, can go a long way in implementing that if indeed it will be accepted across board, Akisa. If you're turning for us there at uh, the thicker superhighway and uh, just behind him we can see the works that are currently ongoing as uh, the roads are marked uh, to um, make it very clear which well, what the express lane is that the NYS buses and other um, uh, dedicated uh, vehicles will be using that particular lane um, in the BRT system as the pilot begins. Um, in